Today we're gonna draw some simple lines, try to perfect their composition, and then we're gonna transform them into real images on Photoshop. And this technique will help you to transform your ideas into reality. Hey there, my name is Ali. Today I'm gonna show you the basics of this technique. It's actually called matte painting. And then I'm gonna break down this one, one of the photos we just seen in the introduction. But first let me thank Eyes of Vic. He sent me on Instagram, he asked for this tutorial specifically. Okay, let's get started. Okay, first I'm gonna like have a white canvas. Now we're gonna first sketch the idea. I'm gonna take a black color. Create a new layer, I'm gonna call it one. Then I'm go just gonna like think of a like a like a skyline of mountains and just I'm gonna sketch an idea. Something like that. Okay, that's one now. Okay, now I'm gonna create two below of one, a new layer. Then also I'm gonna color, I'm gonna like make sure you're coloring ruling all of them with black. I'm gonna make two I want it, maybe like, let's say I want it to be like somehow spikes Something like that Then one big spike in the middle I'm gonna fix that later, it's okay Another spike like that, one like this Okay, it's okay if you, do, you don't like it yet We're gonna fix it, okay this area needs to be fixed, something like that Okay, I'm gonna hold Alt, Alt will minus, Shift will add So I'm gonna just delete this part I didn't like these two, so I'm gonna delete this one And I'm just gonna add another one like that maybe Okay uh, Okay, will not change anything Then I'm gonna add three now I'm gonna call this three Make sure they're in the right order then three, I'm just gonna add some small spikes at the back. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I wanna do something which is like called the D Z depth. This will work by I'll take layer one. I'm gonna press Control and M or go to Image Adjustments Curve. Then I'm gonna just pull this somehow, something like that. So I made it like middle of the square. Okay, then I'm gonna go to two, press control M. Then I'll pull it one and a half square. Then I'm gonna go to the third one, control M, pull it maybe two and a half square. Okay, now I wanna like make my composition even better. I don't like this area, it's too bulky. It looks like it's like fat or something. So I'm just gonna do like this. Get rid of that, okay, we can fix it like, okay, another thing I'm gonna do, I want to detect my middle, this is my middle of the photo, so I want this area down to be the exactly where the middle of the photo is, so I'm just gonna do that, maybe fix it a little bit like that, move it, okay, then I want this one also to be moved like this, so that the middle is somehow like empty, and on layer 3 I'm just gonna erase this part and we have this area it looks bad and I'll just add some spikes on layer 3 make sure you're using the same color and on layer 3 now we're basically just sketching out the composition I'm gonna also stand on my background layer press ctrl M take my whites make my whites a little bit like more to the gray Something like that. Then I'm gonna take a brush, make sure the color is white with a low opacity. I'm just gonna determine where my light is gonna be. I want my light to be here somewhere in the middle. So something like that, maybe. Okay, this is now our light. Okay, now we sketch the composition. I like always to use the navigator to look at it, to see like from far away so you can determine if you can change anything about your composition later. I believe the spikes are too high, so on layer 2, I'm gonna press Ctrl T, make them a little bit shorter. Okay, then on layer 3, I'll make everything a little bit bigger. 
yes the best thing about this technique is that yeah like without putting any effort we just made a like a plain composition and we can just change around it to like get the best result of how to do a composition another thing we can actually do is stand on top of everything go to color balance layer and start playing around let's say we need like the light to be orange so i'll go to the highlights add yellow and or and red it will give me orange then i'll go to the shadows where the dark areas are i'll add some cyan and some blue and then in the mid tones maybe i'll add some green some yellow so you can see like the overall how the color is gonna look like okay that's something Okay, now we need to start adding our mountains or like making it look more realistic. But one thing I'm going to do also, I'm going to draw something. I'm just going to sketch some something like that. I'm a terrible drawer actually, you know. <laughs> and make a new layer, use the same color as this one and just color it up. Let's say this is like our our model or we can even like determine what scale we want him to be or where we want to position him. Maybe I'll position him like this. Maybe I'll add something. Maybe I'll have his hand raised up or something like that. Yeah, this is the best thing about this technique is that you keep drawing until you get completely satisfied with your, what you want before you start making the picture look real. Okay, to make this look like take it a little bit further, I'm gonna take a mountain texture. Not a texture, actually, it's a photo. I wanna like apply this to layer two now, the second one here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it on top of it. Then I'm gonna hold control, press click on layer two, then add a layer mask. Now we have the mountain only applied to this area. But it looks real fake, so I'm gonna rasterize it. And it's like it's too colorful. We wanna work like in black and white first. So I'm gonna go hue and saturation and just bring the saturation low. Maybe I'll move it a little bit to the orange first, then bring the saturation real low. Another problem is it's too contrasty and it should be far away from the like camera. So I'm gonna press Ctrl M again for the curve adjustments. And like I moved it before, I'll move this one again, one and a half, and press OK. OK, now it's a little bit better. We can even make it better by using the dodge tool. I'll use the dodge tool. Our light source is coming from the middle. So I'm going to dodge these areas here and there, like the edges which are facing the light. And if you hold Alt, then do the same it will do the opposite instead of dodging it will burn so i'm gonna burn the ed the places which are like away from the light this will add like depth or make it more 3d okay one more thing usually you should do is i'll add a layer on top of this and take my brush but this time i'm gonna use any cloud brush you have I don't remember if I have one actually, I guess I do, but... Oh, here is it, okay. This is a cloud brush I have. Then use a white color and a low opacity and just very smoothly add a little bit of fog at the bottom areas of your mountain. This will make it more realistic. And then you can bring down the opacity. Okay, so we added a little bit of fog because like the further away the object is, the more fog will be between your eyes and the object. Okay, let's try something. Let's try adding this exact mountain on the third one. So I'm going to hold Alt and put it on the third one. Right click, delete layer mask. Now we have our mountain again. Now I'm going to make it a bit smaller. Like, like that. Then I'm gonna press Ctrl click on the third one. Then I'm gonna add layer mask. Okay, now we have our mountain on the third one. However, we need to press Ctrl M and just make it a lot brighter. Okay, now it's very obvious that we have this one is in like 
in the middle and this one at the back and this one on the front this one we should like do the same also and we will add our model and just like do the sky and everything this is like the idea of how people like add draw whatever they want and add text I'll show you one thing we could do now but first I'll show you a way to improve it you see the edges are too hard it looks a little bit fake so you either use the blur tool on the layer mask and just blur the edges wait okay just on the layer mask make sure you blur oh, I'm, in, I'm on the dodge sorry on the blur tool not the dodge and just blur the edges it will make it much more realistic or you can like make it in a faster way by I'll unlinking it go to filter blur Gaussian blur give it you see it's blurring the edges if you go strong it will be too strong we don't want that if it's zero just a little bit blur maybe 1.5 pixels something like that it will blur the edges a little bit it will make it more realistic however now I can maybe let's say I want to draw something like that And then on the layer mask, I'm gonna use my brush and I'm just gonna paint white. You see what happened now? I'm shaping the mountains the way I want. And of course, on this one, I'm gonna take the like the dodge tool and oh, I'm gonna dodge the edges. And I'm gonna burn like the middle part to give it more 3D. Look. this is very like roughly showing you the technique now we're gonna jump to like a real example to show you exactly what is done okay this is a photo i made let's first get rid of these okay i'm gonna show you like the basic this is the first layer i have it is just basically a gray color with here i wanted the sun to be here or the light to be here then i added this mountain that mountain and the path and here is the character or like so this was uh, just basically the idea this is what I wanted it to look like I wanted like some mountains a path where a man is standing here and the light coming from this area in the middle however like the best thing about that is I like added the golden ratio and I made sure like the mountain is aligning with it and then the like our main subject is exactly like it like at the focus point of the golden ratio also I added some guiding lines to make sure like like I'll have this line pointing towards him that line to attract the eye more like look at it now we have the guiding lines here the golden ratio the mountain and everything okay let's go fast how I created a part of this then I'm gonna go through everything okay this is like three for me this is the one at the back sorry this is the furthest one away from the camera or from your eyes. This was three for me. I just drew it like that, something like that. I want it to be shaped this way, for example. And then what I did was I inserted the first picture. This is what the picture looked like. It's just like a normal mountains and I removed the sky from it. But then it wasn't exactly like, not exactly the same outline of what I drew. So. Let's delete the layer mask for now. So I pressed control and click on three, the exact way we did before. And on this layer, I added a layer mask. Now it's like fitting the area. Then I did the same with another one. It's the exact same photo, you see, but I flipped it horizontal. And if you see here, it's a little bit bright. This is because I, I dodged it. I used the dodge tool and I just like brightened it up. Okay, after I rotated it, flipped horizontal, I pressed control click, then I added layer mask, so this happened. It became like this. Then I took a last photo, but in this last photo, if you noticed, I made a warp. I pressed control T warp, and I just shaped the mountain so it's like bending down at, and moving to this area. Then I grouped these three layers into, I called it mountain back, the mountain at the back. Then to make it realistic, it was too colorful. For the environment, I added a hue and saturation layer, which I reduced the saturation a lot. This is what it did, remove the saturation. And then I added the curves adjustment. You see what I did? I just raised the blacks. You see what it does? 
just faded it a lot then I added this is the fog layer actually you see some fog is added here okay then for this one I did the exact same I added the mountain and also I pressed control click and masked it out and then here I added like a mountain texture it was too blue so I, I didn't like this mountain actually I added some texture with a different color to it then I started adding the road this is just some clouds photo another cloud photo I just don't want to make like I forgot to tell you about the sky actually I added the first thing was the sky I got a sky which was lit from here I wanted the light to be coming from here so I got a sunset sky which is lit exactly from here if you can see you see it was lit from here and I added a curves to it just to fade it out and this one I added more light to that area okay now I also added this like uh, waterfall I just draw it with a brush I guess and here I added this gate and now this I just draw it with a black pencil just to draw something like that so it's like ropes are falling from it and then in this layer actually it was just the rocks this was the first one it's all the same layer I just piled them like on top of each other and then I grouped all the rocks into one group then I made a hue and saturation then a color balance to add a little bit of green to it so it matches the environment and then curves to darken it so it matches like everything again then I started adding some trees on the right side the idea of the trees was to frame this area like I wanted the eyes wait let me show you I want uh, uh, okay here I wanted like the eyes to be looking here so having trees here, something like that, it will make like, it will work like guiding lines to guide your eyes to look at this along with these lines, which like I thought of earlier that will guide me to my model here. And of course, like the golden ratio we talked about before. Okay, then I started adding the trees, just a lot of trees, trees, trees. And then I like the connection wasn't nice between the tree and the ground so I just added bushes here to hide it and here we added our model and then this is just light I added some light here just a white brush and here I added more like bushes and then I did my color grading a curves adjustment first to like decrease the contrast then a gradient map to give it more like warm look then brightness and contrast, brightness and contrast to like brighten up these areas and darken out the rest of the image to bring the eyes here. Then I like grouped everything together and then after I like took a last look about uh, on it, I realized like when I looked from far away, the clouds are too colorful compared to the environment. So I added a hue and saturation layer decreasing the saturation but then I masked it so it only targets my top part. So it's only targeting the clouds. Okay, that's it for today's tutorial. And if you want any tutorial guys like this one, like Eyes of Vic asked me and I made it, just ask me in the comments below or send me anywhere and I'll do a tutorial for you. And every Wednesday will be the day that I will do like the tutorials based upon the requests. Thank you guys.